When I started my home education journey, probably about five years ago, I did a lot of research online. You know, there are various methods of educating your children that a lot of people are not aware of. You know, they've got their own names, named after the people who were the ones that were popular for those various models and methods. In South Africa, we had CAPS. We used to have OBE. Uh, I'm not sure what we had before that. There's Cambridge from the UK. Um, I'm not sure what the American one is called. Uh, there's a there's a Christian um, there's a Christian model as well. Uh, and then there's there's various subjects, Singapore, Australia, etc. But then there's a whole lot of other models. Uh, letting your child lead the education. Uh, there's Montessori. Um, there's unschooling. <laughs> as well as a, as a method. Uh, you can look all of those up. Um, I started experimenting with my own two children, Unkuns in Africa. I'd send them to school for three days a week and then for two days a week, as per agreement with their mother, I got to home educate them. We went to museums, we watched YouTube videos, I took them to the library, uh, we had conversations, we traveled uh, around Johannesburg and Gauteng, we went to visit various farms, um, I took them to visit uh, various businesses, you know, but it was all still very early, you know, um, trying to enlighten and open their minds and, and alternatively educate them. We went to visit other home homeschooling parents as well. And you, and you find that parents do things in so many different ways. One of them being to just copy what school has and then do that at home so that your child is getting the best education with you as the parent, especially if you are an intelligent parent. You know, I think a lot of parents, because they are not very intelligent, it, it makes sense for them to outsource that function to, to qualified teachers. But if you feel you're very intelligent, you're better than teachers, you have a critical thinking mind, and you have the time, you know, and the resources to educate your children yourself, then you do that, you know. In that process of meeting these parents and, and um, doing the research, I realized that it goes deeper. You know, there's the Pestalozzi Trust in South Africa, which I think mostly has a lot of white members. And it's been argued that a lot of the members, they are white uh, racists. And they created this trust to protect parents that home educate their children. Because apparently after 1994, when the ANC took over the South African government, a lot of these white parents were very uncomfortable with their children being in class with black kids. And they wanted to home educate. And it wasn't really... That, that that much allowed and mainstream at that time. And they wanted protection. So the Pestalozzi Trust is a legal group that protects parents who homeschool. It's been open now to more than just white parents. Uh, I've been invited. I've seen the forms. I've had the conversations via some of the Facebook groups. You know, they claim they're open and, and they're thoughtful. But I had a lot of DMs because I'm, I'm quite vocal on, on all platforms. I had a few DMs from white parents saying, look, I used to be part of the Pestalozzi Trust and... I'm uncomfortable with some of their thoughts and their views and they're quite polarizing and very conservative themselves. That's their own politics. But the whole thing was government doesn't want us to raise our children the way we want. And government shouldn't have a say in how we want to raise our children. There's a constitution which talks about children have a right to safety, a right to education, a right to food, etc. Those are rights that children have. But now... That education doesn't necessarily mean kids have to be forced to go to school. And those are some of the fights that some of these parents have. They're saying, these are my kids. I had them. You weren't there. I had them and they are my responsibility as a caring, loving parent. I would like to raise them the way I deem fit as their parent. If that means they're going to school or they're working in the family business or they're working on the family farm or I'm educating them to be conservative, to be racist, to be liberal, it's my prerogative. They are my children. They are not yours. You can't force me to raise my kids the way you want to push your propaganda. Even if it includes things like diversity, multiculturalism, um, accepting various gender sexuality forms. I don't want that. I want to raise my kids the way I want. And a lot of these parents feel like I want to raise my kids the way I want. This extends now to pregnancy and childbirth. We are a lot of parents, and I'm not talking poor people. I'm talking very well off white and other racist people. 
who are like, I want to deliver my child at a home myself. I don't want to be in a private hospital. I don't want to be in a private clinic. I want to deliver myself either with the help of a registered midwife or maybe with my own family. A lot of our parents, a lot of our grandparents delivered their own children because, surprise, surprise, having kids is the most natural thing on earth. No different to taking a shit, to defecating, no difference to eating. Chimpanzees, my favorite animals in the world, do not have all these fancy things that we have. They don't have hospitals, they don't have doctors, they don't have gynecologists, they don't have supplements, they don't have C-sections, they don't have all these things that we call advanced and they deliver their children themselves. And if if they're not doing it themselves and they get support, they're not getting it from a, a chimpanzee that's educated and has a qualification. They're getting it from family. A lot of the conscious parents want to keep their placenta. Apparently, according to nature, it's important for the mother to keep the placenta and arguably to eat it as well. You know, these are things that are seen as voodoo and, and dark and what today but they're the most natural things on the planet. I, for one, appreciate Western medication very much. I appreciate the fact that you can have surgery today and we can prolong life. You can get your leg amputated if you have gangrene so that it doesn't spread to your body and kill you. You can take medication, you can remove parts, you can add donated organs. That's the beauty of advanced medication. But with the advanced comes the evil and the bad. Where doctors, because they make more money, now sneakily find a way to coerce parents. To have a C-section. It helps them. They can deliver three, four to five babies in the morning. And go and look at their consultations. Whereas when a woman's in labor, it takes time. And unfortunately, women are not living healthy today as well. You guys eat. You say, no, it's because the baby's hungry. You guys don't exercise. You don't move around. By the time you have to give birth, you're fat. The baby's probably fat. And you haven't stretched your vagina so you can give birth naturally. A lot of natural women, they move. They still lift the water and fetch the wood and cook and exercise and run during pregnancy. They make sure that they massage themselves or they get people to massage their baby closer to term so that the baby can begin moving downwards. And if they're not having sex, then they're making sure that they're doing some other vaginal exercises or stretching so that the baby's head can come out easily and they can give birth. Giving birth is natural. And this thing of giving birth on your back does not seem natural. You're probably meant to be squatting when you're giving birth because that's that's what de is deemed natural from a body biological perspective but we claim to be advanced and we've got all these interventions whatever the, the case may be in those conversations was immunizations and vaccinations there are a lot of conscious parents who are against those things they don't want their children vaccinated immunized and all of us have been convinced of course because we're constantly convinced your child needs to get the chicken pox the measles the polio vaccines so that they don't die because in the past people died. And a lot of modern parents are saying, no, if my child gets that thing, then it's fine. They'll get it, they'll heal and they'll be fine. They'll be naturally immunized. Sound familiar? That's because we're having these conversations now about the coronavirus vaccine. We're talking about natural immunization has been seen in Israel and other places. In Africa, only 4% of the population is deemed to have been vaccinated. Because of access to health care, we don't have money, etc. But Africans are also not dying. They have strong immune systems because they live in the dirt and the dust. You look at children that grow up in like squatter camps and in the villages. They have strong immune systems. They don't just get sick. Because they are allowing nature to, to, to panel beat their bodies to become strong. It's normally the weaker, very clean, very hygienic children and adults in the suburbs in uppity places that seem to get sick all the time. And then they constantly take medication and vitamin supplements and their bodies become dependent on all these crushes. Natural immunization. Number two, we're now being told that children between 12 and 17 can go get the vaccine without telling their parents. And I saw posts, and I'm hoping they're not real, but you never know. Wiki how. If you go to Wiki, Wiki how, they explain how a child can go get the vaccine by lying to their parents. Which means the leaders that are out there have no issue having children lie to their parents about what they're doing. And in effect, are getting kids to go against their parents' wishes, the people that gave birth to them, and forcing them to do something that is wrong, immoral. I'd like to think in South Africa, children from as young as 12 can get abortions without their parents' consent. 
which is also incredibly, incredibly concerning. I understand the need to protect children from parents that are tyrannical, parents that molest them, parents that abuse them, parents that psychologically oppress them. I understand that. I understand that. And there must be intelligent ways to make sure that children know that they are free and that there are places they can go to for help. But when you're teaching children that you can defy your parents so you can get a vaccine, so you can abort, next thing you can tell children to defy their parents, to take drugs, to kill their, to kill their parents, to do other really, really dark things. And we're now playing in a very, very uncomfortable space. June 1976, black youth in South Africa marched against the government because they didn't want to be forced to study Afrikaans. The apartheid government retaliated by sending out soldiers and the police who ended up gunning down some of these children. Hector Peterson became a name that is, will be remembered probably in the rest of history for this. Young children marching against the tyranny of the state and being gunned down. Fast forward a couple of years and we see miners at London Mine, Lonman in Marikana, marching because they wanted better wages. And someone who used to be a union leader in the mine sector, Sil Ramaphosa, was the person that advised the police and the soldiers to do what is necessary to deal with the issue. And miners ended up being killed and gunned down. What happens now if we see children marching in the streets against forced vaccinations, which we're seeing in the University of Cape Town? They're about to sign in that no one can come to the university unless they have taken a vaccine or if they're willing to test every single week at their own cost, which is unrealistic. What happens if we see kids marching in the streets against forced vaccines because their parents, like the parents in 76, didn't say or do anything? And then we see the same president who was involved in the gunning down of minors, sending the police and the cops who have killed people during the lockdown in South Africa. They have people that have been killed by the police and by the soldiers. And we see that same president sending out soldiers and police and next thing, kill kids get gunned down because they don't want to be forced to vaccinate. And then the parents will wake up and say, no, this is wrong. And we will see the struggle, like the struggle against apartheid, reinventing itself. At some point, people have to wake up at some point, you need to try and reclaim your brain back. You have to protect your children. You have to protect your family. You have to get armed. The state can be tyrannical. We've seen it. We know about dictators. We have a president today that does not take questions during the most sensitive time in probably world history. He will not take questions around corona the coronavirus. He will not take questions around the looting that happened in KZN and other places. He will not take questions about how he's running the country. And he has a history along with the ANC, with Lifeist Dimeni, with Marikana and other atrocities where South Africans have died, have been killed, have found themselves in very dire situations because of bad, weak leadership. I think it's time we have very, very difficult conversations about what are we doing to protect ourselves against bad leaders, whether it's locally or internationally. What are our rights around protecting our children from the state and from other people who are forcing our kids to do things that are against our family wishes and morals and religious beliefs and cultural beliefs? And how do we protect ourselves physically through weapons and other means? It's the time to rise for everyone, parents, teachers, students, just normal citizens. Otherwise, it will be too late and next thing we'll find ourselves under apartheid or some other oppressive regime again. Penuel the black pen. Let's wake up. Cheers.